everyone welcome back to the vlog it has been a while i'm sorry about that but life has just been busy manic hectic i've been taking some time out all that jazz so yeah but anyway i'm here with some updates Firstly, Merry Christmas to everybody. I hope you all had a happy holiday, whatever you were doing, however you were spending it. And a huge Happy New Year to everybody. 2023, I hope, is going to be even better than 2022. I know 2022 was very, very tough for some people out there. Um, obviously, with the pandemic was still going. We've got the NHS in crisis. Everybody's going on strikes. The war in Ukraine. Poverty is happening out there. Homelessness is rising. There is so much chaos. And it feels like the world is going backwards right now instead of forwards. But I really hope amongst the chaos, you have found some peace, joy and kindness throughout 2022. I know I have. I've been very, very fortunate, I have to say. And I feel guilty for feeling like that because I know people have struggled. And actually 2022 for me has been a really good year, um, all in all. So what have I been up to? Lots of different things. A lot of you know that I had a job change back in January. Um, I left GP and I was doing many other things. So I can kind of tell you what I was doing now. So I started off uh, in January, I left GP and I became a disability assessor working from home. Uh, I can't name the company or anything like that, obviously because of confidentiality reasons and we sign a waiver and stuff like that when we started. That's why I couldn't really tell you um, anything about my role or vlog about it and that sort of thing, which was really frustrating because vlogging is what I do. And I like to share my experiences and my journey with everybody. Anyway, I, yes, was a disability assessor working from home uh there was a number of reasons i wanted to do that it was going to give me more time to do the other things that i love so i'd also started with a private transgender healthcare company i was seeing transgender patients there was somebody that made a comment on one of my videos of my new job update that said they were very disappointed that um i'd left gp and gone elsewhere and that i was a wasted nurse please 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 don't say that to anybody. Don't say that to anybody out there that wants to develop their career and do more for patients, especially a vulnerable group of patients. And obviously this person didn't realise that I was still seeing patients and I was still out there doing what I love. Um, they clearly don't know me. They don't follow me on socials. They don't know anything about my life to make that comment, um, which is really, really sad because I was actually seeing patients and I was making a massive difference to the trans community through doing that. So yes, please don't judge anybody for the career developments or the roles that they go into. Every single nurse is valid, no matter what area you go into. So never give up, keep going guys. Don't let anyone put you down. So yes, alongside my two jobs I was doing at the time, I was doing my disability assessment, seeing transgender patients as well um, as my second role. Um, and then I was also setting up my own website called uh, GC Health. I'll put the link below if you want to have a look. But it's just to help share education, information and materials and things like that, resources for people that want to care for trans patients. So I've set the website up now. It's still a work in progress, don't get me wrong. It's very basic, um, but there's some resources on there about transgender patients and guidelines and resources and things like that. So please have a look. Um, and hopefully that there'll be a, a use to you if, if you are caring for trans patients. Another add on to that was uh, myself and George, my partner, if you don't know my partner, George, uh, you should all know George by now. Um, we set up some webinars to deliver to uh, students and healthcare professionals and different organisations, charities, that sort of thing. Anyone who wants it really about transgender healthcare and just given all of the educational advice, knowledge and things that we have combined together. Me as a nurse, George is a transgender man himself and together it just works really, really well to give that information out there to people um, so we've been doing that as well alongside of things so actually I've had three jobs going <laughs> since January another thing that happened this year was I got engaged in case you didn't know I know I don't know what way it goes I'm sure I shared the story though before um, but if you don't know yes we got engaged so that was amazing Next up, my book. I've been telling you for ages about my book. It is finally underway. It has been way too long. It's been frustrating, long process. I started this book 
as a student nurse in 2018. This book was finished like a year ago. It was done, it was finished. Uh, I sent it to the editors um, and it's just been a really long process to get it finalised. Um, I'm not too sure why the editor um, has been very, very slow. They haven't been well and things like that. So it's been a really, really slow process from the minute I handed it in to this stage, which is the editing stage. Um, I have a book cover ready. Um, they've showed me the chapters and what they're gonna look like. It looks amazing. They've sent me the first six chapters yesterday to um, edit them and look at the edits that they've made and make any changes. Um, there was one reference actually that wasn't in there. It's a good job they're looking. <laughs> um, I don't know where that reference went. I think it's to do with um, when I was submitting the book, they wanted it all chopped up into different chapters and then the reference split up and put on each chapter and nobody had told me that at the start. So at last minute before submitting, I had to completely dismantle the whole of my book, which is just on a Word document and then a separate one for the references. Um, I had to dismantle it all and rearrange it all. So I think in that process somewhere, that reference has just got removed <laughs> somewhere. And I, I have no, no doubt in the next six or seven whatever chapters, there's going to be other little bits that are missing as well so but it didn't take me too long it took me a couple of hours just to go through all the six chapters make sure I was happy with everything do the little edits that they wanted um yeah it's that them six chapters should be good to go I think and yesterday when they sent me the chapters to edit I thought I'd just do a little video so you can see what I had to go through just to make you feel included in this book because this book is for you all of you and this is to help everybody you know through your nursing journey from start to finish it's going to be that you know applying to university from the get-go all of the tips and advice for that personal statements interviews everything all the way through first year second year third year new to qualified nurse life and then some bonus bits at the end about LGBT and disabilities and um, people of colour, BAME communities, that sort of thing is included in it. There's loads of different areas in this um, that's going to really, really hopefully help manage sort of different patients as well as yourself and get you to where you want to be and just give you a little bit of a hand if you need it. So here is the little video that I posted yesterday for you. Sorry, this is going to be a little bit of a whoosh. Uh, vlog, uh, but this is the video I did yesterday just to show you what's going on with my book. So this is kind of how it comes um, with all edits and notes and things like that. So I'm just going through all of this. This is one of the chapters. And then I was just sent this just to see like the layout, what it's going to look like, uh, the font and things like that. Um, and I quite like this. I like the layout. I like how that looks so I'm happy with that I know how exciting is this this is so exciting um I really really hope that it helps so many people out there because nursing is tough this course is tough um and since writing the book the course has changed as well but all of the aspects that's in this book is going to be useful it's really done in a generic way so that if the course does change and things like that all these points will still be re relevant. So things like assignment writing, how to structure an assignment and that sort of thing, that's all in there. You can apply that to anything. Um, things like placement advice, placements aren't gonna really change much. You're still gonna have the same process through placements. And, and there's also ward specific placements as well that I've put in, in there, community, primary care, all the help and advice that I could think of to help you through. It's all just really a survival guide to nursing. And hopefully it's just, I'm so excited for it. Even if it just helps one person out there, my job is done with that book. The only thing I worry about with the book is I don't know what the price is going to be and I don't think I have a say in it because it's with the publisher and the publisher has to set the price for how much it's cost to develop and the editors and the, the images and um, the quality of the book and all of that. I'm really worried that it's going to be a bit hefty because I know that books with publishers, nursing related books, um, can be a bit pricey sometimes. 
So I'm hoping I'm going to get one, some free copies to give away to people. Two, I might have a say in the price. I don't know. I haven't asked the question. Um, I need to find out, but hopefully I will have a say in the price because I want to make it affordable for everybody. Um, I'm not here to make money. And even if I do, even, even with the money side of uh, books, I'm literally getting 5%. I know. Um, so you get 10% of book sales. Um, I've split the, the percentage with Anne-Marie Dodson. For those of you that don't know Anne-Marie, um, she was a lecturer at my university as a student. She wasn't my personal tutor or my personal lecturer, but somehow the universe brought us together and we did a lot of charity work. Snowden was with Anne-Marie, um, bake sales that we did and all of that. And she just became like family to me. After I le left university, I, s I still saw Anne. We still did stuff together. We still go to her house and things like that. And meet up for lunch and catch us up and things like that so yeah she's become like family uh Anne marie she's almost like a mother <laughs> it's lovely so yes yeah, so she is getting five percent so we're splitting the cost she wrote one of the chapters in the book well, anyway what i was getting at was even whatever price it's set at i'm not gonna make much money anyway i'm not really bothered i didn't write this to make money i wrote this book to help students and help people and that was my main aim of it it's not about money to me so if i can put it for as less money as possible that would be great anyway this video is getting to be really really long so my final update of 2022 is uh I have a new job i know i've just listed 101 things that i do but i have a new job i saw another job come up and I applied for it. It was for an assistant lecturer role at university. And I know so many people have said to me, even as a student onwards, all through my, I've been qualified for almost three years now. And everyone was saying, oh, you make a great lecturer. You'd be a really good lecturer. Why don't you go into lecturing? And I was just like, oh, I'm not sure I could do it. I love teaching. I love education. I love helping students. I'm very, very passionate about student nurses um, and the future of nursing. So I knew it was something I would love and something that I would like to apply for and something that I'd love to do. But the reason why I had doubts in the back of my mind was um, I have a fear of public speaking and people think that's crazy because I do YouTube vlogs and I'm really active on social media and stuff like that and people think I'm this extrovert person when I'm really really not. I'm actually a massive introvert and the thought of standing in a room with eyes watching you and speaking um, has always terrified me um, and I knew that from a student nurse from the get-go. However, as a student nurse I realised that I really loved education and I wanted to do more to educate others and stand up and speak and things like this. So I knew I had to get over that fear somehow. So I pushed myself and I, I went to and spoke at conferences. I did, um, I've done guest lecturing and things like that just to get me used to it, just to sort of try and help the fear. I mean, don't, t don't get me wrong, I'm still terrified, <laughs> but it's not as bad and I can calm those nerves now and I can get over it and I can just enjoy it hopefully. Um, but yes, I anyway, I applied for assistant lecturer role. That was a very long story, a roundabout way um, at university and I'm ecstatic. I, I'm still absolutely buzzing. I've been in the role for three weeks now. We've just had a week off for Christmas. So technically it's four weeks, um, but I'm just absolutely buzzing like I'm, a, I'm in the pinch me moment because I was like I never thought I would get this I don't know why I think it's that just that self-confidence and imposter syndrome that sort of creeps in and you think nah I'm not good for this role um and actually I got it and I'm going to be doing the leadership module which is amazing I'm really excited to be on the leadership module I'm going to be, I've been given the task of setting up a diversity section and delivering that. So I'm really excited because obviously I love diversity. I love spreading awareness for trans health and things like that. And it's something we really, really need in university for student nurses to give the best care possible to their patients. We need diversity. We need equality. So I'm really, really excited to be setting this up and getting it out there and just hopefully making change to the future. And I'm not 100% sure how much I'm going to vlog about it 
just because I'm very wary now that I'm on the other side, I'm on the educating side of confidentiality. I'm very wary of giving things away that I shouldn't be. And I've always been wary of things like that anyway, even as a nurse. I'm probably not gonna be vlogging at university itself. One, because I don't wanna give away where I'm working. So I think a lot of my vlogging is gonna be possibly from home, from this view. Um, I might take you around um, I might do some vlogging at university. We'll, we'll see what happens and how things go and progress and things like that. Um, I know I'll be sharing some bits on Twitter because the university is very active on Twitter. So I'm going to be doing a lot of Twittering. <laughs> um, so if you're on my Twitter, have a look, go and add me and I'll add you back and all that jazz. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm really excited though. Um, I'm at home. The minute I walked through that door on the first day, I was home. So yes, that is it for 2022. Um, there has been some highs, there's been some lows of 2022. You know, I've changed a couple of jobs. We got our cat Isaac, who some of you have seen on social media, on my previous YouTube blog. Um, we've had a, a proposal. But then there has been some lows as well. We've had some, unfortunately, some family members that have passed away. Uh, my my own dad as well has been very, very ill this year. Um, and I'm, oh, I hope he's going to make it through 2023. Um, but yeah, but we have had some lows, but we have to try and focus on the positives of 2022 and the good things that have happened whilst recognizing that we do have low points in life but it's really really important that we we recognize the struggles we recognize those low points we have our moments you know we cry we get under a duvet we kick we scream do whatever you can to just release that emotion that you're feeling and then rebuild it rebuild it and move on in a way if you can because you have two options in this life. You let something eat away at you and every single day passes by anyway. Or you try and change things if you can and alter things and try and create a positive environment instead for yourself and keep going. And I know that probably sounds really, really harsh. And I fully understand that sometimes we can't change things. Sometimes it's just the way it is. Um, but we can change how we react to things and how we move on and just dealing with it the best we can with what we've got. So on that happy note, um, I hope you all have an amazing 2023. I'm wishing every single one of you so much love, joy, happiness, good health as well. And just let's make 2023 even better than 2022. Happy New Year, everybody.